Hi, and thanks for joining us. I'm David Kasnoff, and this is the Kodak Close-Up. Change is good. Steve McCurry studied to be a filmmaker, but switched to still photography because he liked working by himself. And in a 30-year career that spans news photography, National Geographic, and his unforgettable photos of September 11, Steve's proven he made the right choice. Change is good indeed. In today's Kodak Close-Up, Steve and I talk about his use of color transparency films and his migration from Kodachrome to Kodak Ektachrome and Portra films to capture breathtaking color images for magazine and commercial shoots. These pictures include his award-winning Afghan girl photographs, which are among his best-known work. So join me in today's Kodak Close-Up with Steve McCurry. I studied uh, cinematography. I actually wanted to be a filmmaker. But uh, as, and I took some, a lot of wonderful classes in acting and directing and stage lighting and the whole bit. But I also ended up doing some stills on a couple of film productions out of Penn State. And I just fell in love with the still camera and, and the sol solitude of going out and photographing on your own on the street, coming back and editing. and. The, there was no pressure. You just go out, nothing planned, nothing scripted. You, you know, you get a hundred roll bulk of film and just roll your own. I always wanted to try and shoot projects and assignments which interested me personally. I thought, you know, I may not make a lot of money at this game, but I at least want to be out uh, having an adventure, having a good time being involved in places and people and situations that uh, I cared about and that interested me. Early on, I got a relationship with National Geographic, and uh, most of the assignments I did for them and, and do for them now are uh, proposals that I've actually written myself. The kind of pictures that I seek out are usually in kind of dark, uh, alleyways and, and when the lights low and in, in, in bars and monasteries where you're dealing with really low light situations. I think the big shift in, in digital photography has come uh, has shifted so that instead of going up to you know in the old days if you went up to you know 1600 ISO or 6400 I mean that was like whoa that was like you know crazy and now uh, that, that's pretty standard stuff. I'm often finding myself uh, shooting at a very high uh, ISO in, in, a, in, a, in a dark monastery or in a, some sort of a alleyway or at night or somewhere where it's really dark. Um, and, and the difference is that with the, with the new technology is that you can actually stop action in those really dark situations. I don't think there's ever been in the history of photography a better film, uh, a better way to actually uh, look at the world than, than with, with Kodachrome uh, 64 or 25, of course that's gone, and uh, Kodachrome 200. These were, I mean, th this was the only way I shot uh, for decades. I have a archive of somewhere between 800 and a million uh, transparencies in my studio and probably uh, you know 90 percent of that is, is on, on Kodachrome. When I started freelancing in 1978 I went to, to India with basically a, a one-way ticket and a few thousand dollars and I had um, two suitcases. One suitcase was full of clothes and the other suitcase was full of 250 rolls of Kodachrome. Even till today uh, you, you can't make a better picture uh, on, on any film or uh, digital. I mean, Kodachrome's really the, the, the kind of standard. It's, it's the best. It's the gold standard of, of uh, imagery. I, I was up in Rochester uh, some years ago, and I went through the processing plant, and it's just it blows your mind at how complicated it is to, to actually make this film. Well, it turns out that uh, the, the economics of the situation are just obvious and you can't um, manufacture and, and have a, a line, a product line with uh, perhaps dozens of people uh, you know, trying to make a living and, and, and sell 30 rolls of film. It's just 
not happen. It's impossible. Somewhere along the line, uh, they really things turned around, and those ectochrome films, the, the you know the E100 and the, some of the other films, actually are spectacular. The colors are as um, true as when uh, I first shot them. I just recently shot a whole uh, assignment for uh, Toyota, uh, traveling around the country, uh, and all I used was the, is the, the portrait of colored egg film. It, it was great. My picture of the Afghan girl uh, back in 1984, I, I photographed with the Kodachrome 64. And when I went back and, and we found her, all those pictures of the Afghan girl found were made on uh, Actochrome, the E100 uh, film. Um, I mean, they're, they're both excellent. I mean, put the two frames side by side or the two prints side by side and they uh, look great. So um, uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful film. Um, I still, in fact, still use it. On occasion, um, uh, and it's uh, you know it's improved over the years in, in a dramatic way. You know, I would hope that my legacy is I, I uh, documented and traveled uh, and photographed in, in parts of the world which have changed forever, and the the, the beauty and some of the uh, culture which has vanished now, uh, whether it's how people dress or how they live or the architecture, a lot of that which I documented 30 years ago or whatever, it, it's just gone, never to be repeated, never to come back again. It's just vanished. And, and it was wonderful. There's was, was a lot of poetry and, and these uh, types of uh, cultural things. Uh, and, and I find it very sad that. Uh, it's gone, but I think to ha have documented it and to be able to look back in the pictures and be able to appreciate it and to, to have that memory of that, 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 that beauty uh, or that way of life or whatever is, is really important. And I'm, I'm happy and grateful because I had, had the opportunity to do it.